Hi, I'm Alex Radcliffe. And I am Ricky. Today we're reviewing my top 10 games. So are we reviewing these or just listing them? We are listing them and then giving slight overviews of them. Slight overviews, that seems reasonable. And these are your top 10 favorite games of like 2020, of all time, of last week and a half? 2021. 2021. Well, tw well, these aren't from 2021. This is top, top 10 of top 10 games of all time as of 2021. But yeah. I, uh, I don't understand that, but okay. Okay works for me. So, do you want to start us off? What's your, what is your t number 10 game of all time? Actually, oh, actually we what? are not starting with my 10th favorite. We're starting with, ele we're starting with 11, which is Creature Comfort. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This is a top 10 list. How are you starting with number 11? Because Creature Comforts is not at, is, is still a prototype, so it's not officially out yet, so we're not counting it as an official game. Mm. Are you cheating? Yes, and it was your idea. That's fair. Yeah, so so Board Game <laughs> Code, this is a Board Game Code top 10 list, which means we managed to get more than 10 games into our top 10 list because we like games too much. And so Creature Comfort was your number 11, and you want to tell people about it? Uh -huh. Creature Comforts is a game well, you, when you are preparing for winter. Mm -hmm. You have to go to your old dice and, and you place little weeples in a bunch of different places to get items and build things and so that help you get points to get prepared for winter and the seasons change and everything else and your little animals preparing for winter in your ends. Yeah, and I'd show you the back of the box except this is a prototype and so the back of the box is white and boring looking. And I actually doesn't... never know. That. Doesn't hey? You should pay attention to detail. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this is gonna be. We can draw a picture on the back. You can do it. Um, actually, now that I think about it, we actually have to. As soon as we're done with this video, we actually have to ship this off to someone somewhere. I can't remember where I have to find an address. We're sending it internationally to someone else. But yeah, I know. We're still. We're gonna get a copy back. We have. We're gonna have our own pledge with the actually the luxified pieces and all that because I mean we've reviewed this game and you have a playthrough coming of this game. But it's uh, the, we we want the final version of the game because the luxified prettiness and all that as opposed to. We will to, also not have a missing component. And we'll also not having a missing component from our prototype. That's fair as well. We had to use dice. We did have to for use a twisty dice. Twisty thing. Yeah, for the twisty thing. Yep. At feasible. least we're going to have a new one that's um, deluxified. That's the hey, oh my gosh! You haven't. I don't even think I've shown. I still keep telling you I'm gonna show it to you. I keep forgetting to show you, you that. Did. Yeah, I need. I just showed you. Yes, when you're showing me all the all the, uh, how a bunch of different stuff like we're going to be three D instead of paper mm. and cardboard. Cool. Well, okay. Cool. That's your number eleven. Your magical eleven. What's your number ten? And number ten is Valeria Card Kingdom. Valeria Card Kingdoms, which, by the way, there's an expansion for this coming to Kickstarter in a few days. Woo! Yeah, more content, and we already have a jam-packed box. See this one? I can actually show you the back. But we already have a completely jam-packed box of Valeria Card Kingdoms with, you know, everything from the, um, I don't know, the Frost and Flames expansion, like the 15 different modules they have, mm -hmm. as well as the, the C Margraves. one. Margraves. Well, Margraves is not an expansion. That's a, a tangential game. Good. Uh, but we have... Good. <laughs> uh, I don't yeah. like it. She does not like Margraves. She takes after her mother in that sense. Yes. But uh, we, we have the other one, the Raiders, the C, the Crimson C, something. We have the C one, whatever it's called. <laughs> Would you please explain this? Because I haven't played it in a while, and it's also very complicated. Sure, sounds good. So Valeria Card Kingdom is the very short version of it. Is this going to be one of those games like Machi Kuro, like Orkonomics that we just had on the channel, like Catan, like uh, Space Never Space? Never Machi Kuro or Machi. I know, I know, but people know what they are. Or at least some people know what they are. And those that don't, we're about to explain. Okay. Yeah, and, and that oh, style of game, that style of game in general is going to be rolling dice and activating things to then get more things that you can activate so that when the dice roll again, you activate more. It's a cycle of just building up a bigger engine so that the more you roll dice, the more you get stuff until eventually someone wins with their own unique victory condition. Uh, in the case of Valeria Card Kingdoms, you're going to be trying to defeat a whole rows of monsters, build up domains, uh, just recruit more villagers. You're going to have a private duke that's going to give you their own reward for different collections of things you do. And then the expansions will mix that up experience as well. Uh, for me, what makes well, why are you talking about me? Why do you like Valeria Card Kingdoms? Well, one, it's super fun. Mm, that's a good reason to like a game. Two, it's not so simple as boring. Mm, that's also a good reason to like I like the, both your reasons, sweetie. Three, there's a lot of MacGyvering, and you, and you can also get a bunch of different stuff and still get a bunch of stuff on the same turn. What is MacGyvering? MacGyvering? Like, you have to, like, cleverly change things and do Where do you things. know that word from? Books and other stuff. Do you know where that word is from? 
I don't remember. So it's from a TV show called MacGyver, which is all about... It's an old TV show. That's why I'm confused how you know this word. But it's an old TV show MacGyver where the guy... MacGyver brings regular words, not just from a TV It's show. from a TV show. The guy's name is MacGyver, and he would, like, fix the... Like, diffuse a bomb with a, tooth, a toothpick and some toothpaste or whatever it is. He'd have weird things, and he'd MacGyver, and it became a verb because of what he did. Okay. It's called MacGyver from a TV show. Really I old TV show. I have never heard of that. That's what I assumed, which is why I was confused to hear you word, use the word MacGyver. MacGyvering is, pro is also used in practically every book I, I mm, read. It's from the TV show. At least I hope so. Otherwise, I'm going to get a whole bunch of comments telling me how I'm completely wrong. But whatever. I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> Whoa, okay. Uh, so that's Valeria Kartinimus. I Kingdoms. would like to... I, I, I would prefer that the, that, a, that a very cool word does not just is not a written originally from a TV show. Mm, that's reasonable. That's a reasonable preference. Mm -hmm. While I give you your number nine, I'll go ahead and look it up on my phone over there. Number nine is going to be... Dixit. Dixit. I realize these boxes all block you when I hold them in front of your face, so I'm going to just keep putting it like this over here. So, Dixit, mm -hmm. you want to tell me about Dixit while I yes. look at my guy bring on my phone? <laughs> you keep doing Dix you. Dixit is a game where you have a, a hand of cards, and then you have to think of a one-word clue... For a, for a card, and then place that card face down, and then tell everyone the clue. The way you start is just whoever finds the clue first gets to start, and who and whoever was correct gets to do the clue next, unless no one was. In that case, then you just do it with the first person that has a clue idea. Basically, then everyone else has to find a card that matches that clue. So let's say you had a card that was covered in that was covered in birds that and their wing and that were made of paper. Then you could say origami, mm, and then other people work. would take things that ha that are related to origami. Like someone might have someone constantly drawing on paper. Someone. And it might have a bunch of animals that are statues. But after then we lay them all out and then everyone puts down a token with a number on it that shows you which number I think it is because there's a track that has all the numbers. Yeah. Whoever's correct, let's go next. Why, why do you like this game so much? Well, you get to think of clever names and have a bunch of cool cards. It's absolutely ridiculous. Mm, it is ridiculous. It, the cards are really off the top over there. Yes, and also it's really fun when you have to figure out, oh, I don't have any good cards for that. I'll just pick this because it's, it's kind of close. It's fun when you're running out of options, so you just have to do the best you can. Mm -hmm. And then you do something, and then you do something that'll completely flunk someone, but still match it out one person. Because yep. you don't get any points if no one gets it. Yeah, you want to ensure that you're. You, don't get any points you want to ensure it. your clues are accurate enough that at least one person gets it, and not so accurate that everyone gets it. Because in either of those situations, you get no points, which is how the game balances being well, not and ideal. Also all of the point figures are colorful bunnies. Mm, they are colorful bunnies. Honestly, you can't go wrong with any game that gives you points in terms of colorful bunnies. I do agree with that. Yes, bunnies are amazing. Cool. So you're number eight. Although before we give you number eight, I did look it up. Fun fact, MacGyver is officially a verb according to the Oxford Dictionary. So now to MacGyver something is actually a verb in the common English language. But yes, it is from the TV show. Oh, no. Yeah, so that's interesting. I didn't know it was an actual verb. I thought it was just slang. Number eight that's an actual verb. is going to be... Castles of Calladale. And can you explain what Castle of Cal looks like? Yes. Ooh, I can show this one on the back. But first of all, it actually actually comes with a story. Oh, it does come with a story. You're right. Can you do the condensed version of the story? Because I know how long the story, the story, story is. Short story, because I, I only read about most of it. Didn't read the full thing yet. What's the short version of the, the story? The short version is basically there was there was a wizard, and he had an apprentice. But the apprentice did something, which actually caused all the castles to break apart. So now you have to rebuild them. As apprentices are wont to do. <laughs> Yep. And you start with one tile and a platform. And then you place tiles all around that are three different materials. Stone, um, villagey stuff, and plants. I usually always go for plants because there's a lot of fairies. The plants are the coolest one, honestly. They have trees and fairies and, 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 and stuff. And, stuff. and flying squirrels. Fla they do? Yes. Cool. Didn't even realize. Cool. Why do you like this game? Um, one, it, the art is absolutely beautiful. Yes. Two, you get to be very creative, make your own castle. Mm -hmm. Three, the theme is fun. Yep. And four, it is not overly complicated. 
Yeah, uh, Castle of Caldale is going to be building a... building on castles according to the rules. It's almost a Castle simpler matchup. or intro version to Carcassonne. If you've ever played Carcassonne, this is going to mm -hmm. give you that similar mm -hmm. experience that you're basically trying to match things up in a pretty thing. I sort of a few I differences. Sort of agree with that. I sort of don't. Sure, I'm sure you do. But a few similarities are going to be the fact that you are... Sorry, a few differences is going to be in Carcassonne, you're building a central area. In Castle of Caldale, you're building your own area. Mm -hmm. In Castle of Caldale, you can constantly rearrange your castle, which oh, makes yes, it a little that's, that's another reason I like the game. Yeah. You're always, you're always allowed to rearrange you don't have to be stuck with something and then not be able to take your turn for the rest of, for the rest of the game yeah and that flexibility is nice to one extent on the other hand it can lead to a lot of ap analysis paralysis as people try to sit there for the whole turn and rearrange their entire castle but overall oh, it's I a great do that when I need to. yeah yeah but overall it's a great it's a great idea. entry point to that style of tile laying game your number six or seven we have That's ten seven. nine eight number seven is going to be Chicago! Burninating the countryside. <sighs> okay. Trogdor, which we, you and I did a review of this one. Yes, we did. It was the second review we ever did. Cool. You're being blocked by the light, so I'm going to be careful with this over here. Okay. We have a light over there off to the side, casting giant shadows on Ricky's face now that I... Ah, look at her. You can't see Ricky. <laughs> so, Trogdor. Let's start putting them in your side. Yeah. Okay. Trogdor is actually originally from a little show on Strong Pad. Yes, it is. He's asked to draw a dragon, and he names it Trogdor the Burninator. Mm-hmm. He does. The game is basically you have to burninate the countryside mm. by moving a lot of little, tro uh, moving around a little trogdor figure figurine. This is the deluxe version, so it gives you a bunch of fun ones. Yeah, the game actually comes with like fourteen different versions of deluxe. We have like one of the higher tiers, but yeah. not the highest tier. The highest tier is like a and giant and wood board. A really it's cool. Fun, uh, and a really fun thing is while you're burning the thing, a really fun thing is there are cottages all around. That's where little peasants spawn. Yeah. But one thing that's up, that's absolutely one of my favorite things in the entire game. As if, as if the t a cottage tile, along with all the tiles surrounding it, are burninated. Then oh. you get to burninate the cottage and flip the roof to make it on fire. And then every time a peasant runs into it, it follows the pattern, the moving pattern. You draw cards to figure out the moving pattern for all the bad, for all the people you're trying to that are trying to kill you. And then they and then they burninate every tile they touch on, which is really fun. Yeah, it doesn't happen a lot. We play a bunch. Fire I think it's only happened twice, but like when you have those peasants running around. Burninating the tiles for you before extinguishing in flame. Again, not really a kids' game when you think about it, but, but it's, still fun. it's it is it is one of those fun moments. It feels very rewarding to to have all your carnage and done for you. <laughs> yeah, and and that's great. We we both love Trogdor. Trogdor is yes. awesome. It is one of those surprise hits for me. I wrote it off because it's an IP game with simplified mechanics, and I just but wrote it off. Version. Yeah, the it's the, yeah, I like it. I like it though. Uh, but I am not important here. You are important, which brings us to your number, what, five? No, I, d I didn't say why I like number the game. Six. Why do you like the game? I like the game, one, because Trogdor is hilarious and amazing. Uh -huh. Two, because because you get to burn and eat the countryside. Best theme ever. That is true. Num number three, it's a, fun g it's a fun game where you're flipping tiles and moving around while trying not to die. Number four, you can hide. And and a fifth thing is super fun. The the rule book looks like looks like oh. Trogdor got a hold of it and has it all taped and written on top of it. To, to and, and he like Trogdor edited the edited it and it's super funny. Yeah, and number six for me, yeah, this is minor six. I love the fact that you get you get a unique power and a unique uh, item yeah, at the beginning like of the game too. that gives you a lot of unique stuff to mix it up your experience. Every time you play it, it does feel different because you're like, ooh, this time I can magically flip over that tile. This time I could draw the random action card or whatever it is. But yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, and one thing. Yep. Every time you're talking about burning, you have to say burn an eight. Yeah, you do have to say burn an eight. It's very important. of the game. Yeah, we've lost yeah. a few times because we didn't do that correctly. Actually, we always say burn an eight, but we've lost a few times because we because we were too excited about doing things to uh, destroy destroy peasants. And also because of the hammer thing that you oh, put yeah. in. Oh, yeah. you put in. But I just, when we were, after we start the game, you didn't tell us until after we started the game. Yeah, that sounds like me. That was That's very Trog annoying. Hammer. I don't like Trog Hammer. He makes it very, very, very Trog hard. Trog Hammer is awesome. He makes it very, very, very hard. Number mm -hmm. 6A and 6B are going to be... GPS and Mountain Boats. The way we're achieving these in is they're both from the exact same series. It's yes. Actually, there's actually three games, but I didn't put the third one in. So, fun fact. When Ricky came to me with our pile of, like, 18 games to put in our top 10... It was 14. It was 14? No, it was a lot at first. You, cl you cleared 15. that. 15. 
when Ricky came to her with her giant pile of games to get in her top 10, I, I explained the rules of as long as you find a reason, you can get whatever you want in here, but you have to come up with a reason, however fictional or made up it may be. So in this case, we are combining Mountain Goats and GPS because they're the same series, so it counts as six. Yes, and, I, and GPS I definitely prefer out of the two, but I both love them. Yeah, I would agree with that. Mm -hmm. And we actually have a full review of GPS, Sequoia, and Mountain Goats. Sequoia Altogether. didn't make the cut for as far as her favorites, yes. but it's still a solid game. And we still own all three, and so far, go ahead. Why don't you want to talk about them? Okay, I'm going to start with GPS. GPS sure. is a game uh, that you have to place all your little satellites in a number order from 1 to 12. Mm -hmm. And they have to be reasonably spaced apart. 12 has to come near the end of the Earth. And and one needs to come near the beginning. You spin the dial, and wherever it lands, you have to put you have to put one of the three face uh one of three of your face up satellites in that space. Mm -hmm. Something gets really annoying because one time, I had to place I had to place something, and the lowest I had was eleven. Yeah, and it's going to be very similar to a certain extent to uh, the 10 Days in the USA series. It's going to have a similarity there, or I think Racco is the other one. That idea of trying to predict where something needs to be based on the distribution of cards. So, like, yes. you might want to put something here because it leaves enough space for the 10 and the 8, and over here you leave enough space for this and that. So, it's like it's predicting the pathway things will take and then adjusting or pivoting as the mm -hmm. game progresses. And, and now it says 14 years, but I've played it many times and won. Mm, yeah, it's probably, it probably doesn't count, though. We don't count those because you're not supposed to be playing them. Yeah. Yeah, at all. At all. Blah, blah. And Mountain Goats? Mountain Goats also 14 years. Well, and Mountain Goats is a game where you are a little goat, and they actually look like goats. Mm -hmm. You are trying... Oh, I can show you back? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> little goats. Okay. And you are trying to make it up the mountain to get points. Yep. And how does and it And it goes like? from 6 to 10. In the, in the mountain range, and the way you play is you roll four dice, yep. and then you group those dice into two groups mm -hmm. in any configuration you want. Oh, I didn't say how I like You it. can actually group it into... I'll say how I like both in the mountain. Yeah. And you can group into more than that. You any can do... configuration you want. Yeah. And, and the, as, but, it, but you can only do as many configurations that... You, but the configurations only count if they are between six and ten. Yes. So you only get... Hmm, six. Okay. Five, 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 five configuration options sure. to do, and then you, whatever the numbers are, you move one of your goats up that thing for all the numbers. Yeah. And if, but one thing I really like about the game, if you more roll more than one one, then you get to choose one. Then you get to do all the one. Then you get to do all the ones except the first one and make them however you want. Yeah, and it's going to be similar so to Can't can Stop to a degree. Without the Can't Stop is going to have that aspect of you can keep going and going. This one does not have that. But the goal is to roll dice, uh, clump them into various groupings. It could be between one and I guess I don't know how many. Ten. Yeah, but no, I'm saying I'm saying you can have as many. If all four dice, if you roll four fives, you can literally do five, 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 five again and again. Does it start with five or six? I think six. it's with five. Five. I think it has with five, but Six. I can go off. We can check that up later. But either way, yeah, you're going to go up the mountain until you get to the top, and you can start knocking people down. So when you get to the top of the mountain, you can start getting bonus points, which is fun, and you knock other people down the mountain, which is also fun. Why do you like these games? Um, well, well, I like GPS because the theme is rocket ship. Okay. It's fun to spin the dial and place little, little satellites around and try to win. Mm -hmm. And yep. in Mount, and I like Mountain Goat because... Because one, they actually put a lot of effort into these games to make yep. them look nice. Like you don't just have a plain black, boring, boring blob for the spinner. Yep. You actually have a spaceship with puffs. Yeah, this is going to be by Board Game Tables. Board Game Tables does very solid games in terms of the production. Yes. We actually just played Bites from them as well. Which oh yes, we, Bites! Well, shh, don't give it, don't tell them. We'll do a review of it. <laughs> well, you just played it. You you had this listing on the floor for a few days for already. So let's see. Let's put these over here. Okay. Yeah. Which brings oh, I us. I didn't finish saying why I like mountain. Go goats, ahead. So. Well, they have little gold figures. That's one thing I love. I mm -hmm. also love her trying to get to the top of a mountain, and also can be very competitive and annoying when. You're like, no, <laughs> none of these configurations can. They're all twos. Yeah. So so it's hard to get anything well. Yeah. Good. That's tough. That's mm -hmm. why you don't like it, or you, why you like it. That's why I like it, because it's fun to watch your opponents do that. It's fun to have that happen to your opponents. That's called schadenfreude. You want to learn that word? No. Schadenfreude. Schadenfreude is the joy you experience in others' misery. Hmm. Is that a good word? 
No. <laughs> is that but a <laughs> in a game it is. Okay, well, you can experience schadenfreude whenever you see other people falling down the mountains. It's very enjoyable because only one go is the last down a mountain at a time. Yeah. So if someone's getting a lot of points, you just just abandon everything and make it your goal and make it your goal to knock them down. That's actually true. Yeah, you do want to do that. That's not shot in for you. That's just tactics. That's mainly tactics. Yeah. Okay, okay on to the next five? game. Number five is going to be Grim Masquerade. We have yet to do a review on this. Yeah, we do have to do a review on this one eventually. But uh, mm -hmm. Grim Masquerade is going to make its way. Oh, interesting. Oh, interesting. You know what's interesting, Ricky? What? I just realized what game you did not put in your top ten. What? A game similar to Grim Masquerade. Grim Forest? Nope. Uh, what's a game that's similar to Grim Masquerade that plays similarly? Uh, Do you remember? Uh, no. Cloak Cats is not in your top no. ten. No! You forgot. You can you can lump it together. Oh, Grim actually, Masquerade. I didn't. I, I just didn't put it in. You, I, just, oh. I just took it out. Oh, okay, fine. Oh, actually. In here, we just we just played it, mm. and we never brought it back down. That's what happened. Oh, that might have happened. Okay. So, Cloak Cats would have been in our top ten along with Grim Masquerade. But let's go ahead and talk about Grim Masquerade. Mm. We did a review of Cloak Cats. They know how you feel about that yeah. one. Yeah, Grim at Masquerade is a game where you are a fairy tale character, mm -hmm. but you don't tell anyone who you are, and then you have to knock down other people and find out who they are. If either you find out everyone to win the round. There's three rounds, no. or, or you get three of a certain item. If you if you get two of a certain item, you lose. If you get three of a certain item, and you win. Either that, either that, or if you're the last person standing, you win. Yeah. You also lose, and you also immediately lose the round when you're unmasked. Gotcha. So effectively, it's you a lightweight social deduction in which you are slowly but surely trying to figure people out, uh, figure out who is who, more through the use of mechanics as opposed to reading opponents. Although reading opponents can help to a certain degree. Uh, why do you like it? Um, one thing, it's fairy tales. Mm, that's a good Number reason. Number two, you're hiding who you are and you're collecting a bunch of fun, cute items. Mm, so, so far you like hiding who you are and watching others be sad. Got it, okay? No, I'm not. That's not what I said. No, in other games. I'm just combining all the things you like in games. Oh. Uh, uh -huh. Meh. Okay. <laughs> Anything else? Mm hmm I like how there's always different things. You can na kind of narrow it down. Mm -hmm. I like how there's special abilities to help you. I will read you the ones on the box. Well, p point the finger is always in play. Point And point the finger you are... You point your finger at someone and say, You are... Well, whoever you think they are. Yeah. If you're right, you get a rose. If they're wrong, if, if you're wrong, they get a rose. Roses are points. Yes. Mm hmm And the two things on the back. Don't go through all of them, but you can do more. Two Make a toast. Is draw an artifact and give it to one or more players. Yeah, and, and I think they then they pass it around. No, that start the dance. Start the dance to choose an artifact to pass left or right, and then your opponents pick one randomly, so you can end up with something really. Yeah, easy that's important because the artifacts it's really drive like home how you figure out who is who. Because people are trying to collect sets of artifacts, and so giving them or taking or ma manipulating the artifacts is a big part of the game. Mm -hmm. Okay, but that's your number five. You can help them. What's your number four? Number four, uh, I. Really it's not on my side. It's on your side. You just grab the top. Oh, yeah. yeah. Truffle shuffle. We did a review on this. Yes, we did. Yep. Do you want to tell me how to play? Ruffle over you? Yes, truffle shuffle is a game where there's a pyramid of cards that are all truffles. And you need to collect truffles to sell them to people and get points. The points are chocolate coins. Yeah, that is the best part. Yes. It's a good, but it's a good thing they didn't they'd use real chocolate coins because they would disappear before the game was over. Mm, yeah, they actually. So it did would send be fun if they if were, what? They actually did send real chocolate coins, but I disappeared them all, and then I just substituted some random fake chocolate coins I had around. Ha ha ha. <laughs> but uh, but it would be fun if they had wrapper queen, if they had crinkly wrapper you can peel off. Hmm, that would be actually disappointing. Imagine if they give you chocolate coins with crinkly wrappers and you peel it off expecting chocolate, and you're like, and this is cardboard, and I am not happy. I give it no, one star. No, it would be cute. It would be cute to make it all crinkly or yeah. look crinkly. Cool. Um, and and well, you have to make certain pairs and you win by getting the most points. Mm -hmm. One thing I like about the game, chocolate. Yeah, that's a good reason. Another thing I like the, about the game is there's some mystery because some cards are face down. So when you pull them up, you don't know what you're going to get. Mm. Yeah. Another thing I like about the game is it's fun to get a lot of special pairs. Like many times, I've gotten five fives. All the same color, so often, uh, often I can get the number set flush. Mm -hmm. 
I always try to do that. Yeah, it's, lot, it's five, basically going to be poker four. hands. You're trying to collect sets of chocolate and sell them off to the players, combine the special abilities that will... And all the chocolates. All the chocolates. Look. I, I see all the special. chocolates. Yeah, I no, know. No, our special. The, the rainbow one and the, and the rainbow one that's chain, that, that, chain, that is the whatever color you want. The, the frosting, the little drizzle, is color changing. On fives, there's five stripes. Color change, a bunch of sprinkles. Mm-hmm. Four, four stripes, two is a half, three is three stripes, and one is just little sprinkles. Cool. And they all have a bunch of special patterns. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. And also, you're able to tell, if you need a certain ability, then try to get a certain card. Because some abilities are on special cards, like color changes are only on purples. Mm. Only on the back of purples. So yeah, that's going to lead to the strategy to behind picking cards that are face down, trying to like guess, okay, well, I have these cards and I, I can see that the yellow change. five's up and I know that I want this one. So yeah. Number three. Mia London. We just did a playthrough. Yes, we, just did a this play one. we just did a playthrough of this actually last Friday. Yeah, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. So, Mia London. Want to tell people how to play? This yes. is a very short one how to tell people. Yes. Mia London is a game. Mia London and the 625 Scoundrels. Mm hmm. Uh, that's sideways. Oh, yeah, but no, oh, no, back no. it's not. I know. I put my box tops on the wrong way. It, it messes people up. Okay. In Mia London and 625 Scoundrels, you are trying to figure out who the Scoundrel of London is. Mm -hmm. So, you have a flip book that you open, and there's a bunch of options. And then you quickly place down cards uh, with different things, and you and you always take out one card from each stack. And you have to, and you have to figure out which one only came out. Well, you only saw once. Because what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be flipping cards rapidly, and people have to pay attention to see which icon only comes up once as you're going through the yes. hats, the mustaches, the bow ties, and the glasses. Yes. Yeah. Those are the accessories, and there's five of each type. That's why it's six hundred twenty-five. Hi, uh, because five times five times five times five. Yeah, that's because just... each one has five things with five possibilities. So it's already five possibilities. Twenty-five. Five times five times five times five times five is six hundred twenty-five. Yes, it is. There's six hundred twenty-five options, and that, so, and so you flip it on, and at the end, everyone reveals their flip books. They don't. You don't show in the middle of the game, and then we reveal all the cards that were taken out. No one knows, and the and there's one person that's the card dealer. They usually don't play. Mm -hmm. Well, it depends. So, Sometimes we played. I think the only time we didn't have them play is when we had more than four players and we... And, and, and we have only ever played with less than four players once. Yeah, exactly. Uh, why do you like it? Uh, I like it because it's a memory game and you have to flip to find 620... To find the scoundrel. Mm -hmm. I like the art. I like the theme. And I also like how you have to scan all the different types of things, figure out, did I see this once or this one? Because not just remembering, it's not just remembering all the ones that came out, it's also trying to figure out if the similar ones, the bow ties, the bow ties are the hardest, mm -hmm. actually they're harder than the mustaches, because the mustaches don't look similar, they only look a little bit similar, because they're all mustaches. But the bow ties, they have big dots and tiny dots, sl slanty stripes and straight sli stripes. Gotcha. And it's really, really overwhelming, and that's another good thing. It's fun, and, and you also can make it even harder by just randomly... Sh no, this is not proposed in here. Uh -huh. You can also make it even really hard by just randomly shuffling all four types of things so you don't know when each type of thing is going to come out if it's getting really, really easy and even really, really, really good, and you can try that. Yeah. I'm going to need a little difficulty. Cool. Okay. Number two. Number two. Harry Potter Hogwarts Battle Defense Against the Dark Arts. The two player game. Yeah, this is going to be a two player version that all, kind of combines the gameplay it's, it's of, of, of so Harry Potter fun. Hogwarts Battle and Star Realms. It's giving you those those kind of experiences there. Can you help uh, me explain it because there's a lot? Absolutely. Harry Potter Hogwarts Battle is a deck building game that you're going head to head in order to stun your opponent three times before they stun you. Throughout the game, you're going to be developing your deck, like in most deck builders. You're going to have curses, you're going to have allies that, like, you know, you could have Hagrid or or Snape or whoever, not Voldemort, he's a bad ally. Uh, but you can have all those added to your deck, and as they come out, they will stay in play, further helping you until your opponent takes them out. You go back and forth trying to heal yourself, build up your economy, and then ultimately stun your opponent, and when you're done that three times, you win the game. Yes, and last... And, and one time 
time when I was playing with Abba, he bombarded me with curses. Ooh. I had 21 curses in the entire game, and he had five. Yeah, one time we played, I went very curse-heavy. It was kind and of sad. almost all of them were, stay in your deck, stay in your deck, stay in your deck. Yeah, on the one hand, it was satisfying. On the other hand, it's, it it, annoying. it's an annoying way to play the game. I would not I would recommend not going not overly. Not doing that how yeah. you are all very strategized. Well, I just good. think it's not as fun. Like, I mean, there's losing games can be fun. That's not a problem to lose, but when you when when you the process of winning ensures that you are frustrating others i think that takes away from the overall experience yes yeah but, but that's that only one time annoying. the rest of the time i mean yeah lots of the time we are in you it's, it's clearly her second favorite game of all time so i think she still likes it despite that it's why do you like it so much well one it's harry potter base mm -hmm. two you are deck building yeah three you are trying to fight your opponent and stun them in a bunch of cool ways okay four the art Mm -hmm. In five, you actually get to pick your house. You get to pick your house, and it's fun to do special pairs. Like if you like, you can decide. One of us plays Slytherin, the other of us plays Gryffindor. Mm, I'll be Gryffindor. And you can also Slytherin. pretend that you're a certain character. Yeah, that's definitely true. I mean, you're, you're cool practically items. Hermione. I am a Hermione. Yeah, very much Hermione. And I also, and I act, and there's a bunch of cool items, mm. super duper cool ones. Yeah, like the the unthinkable curse. It's so much fun. I love it. Uh, and, uh, yeah, they have a, they have they have Crucio in a spell. Yeah, I know. It's sort of that pointy. was very annoying. Which is actually amusing because theoretically you're supposed to be simulating a duel between the students who are prepping. It's it's meant to be a classroom setting, and someone's using Crucio, which it's definitely definitely a Malfoy. Definitely Malfoy. That's how I was Which thinking. is why it also has a, a. Which is why if it had an ability, if it had an extra house ability, then it would then I would then it would definitely be a Slytherin. Yeah, it's reasonable. Yes. Okay, number one. The number one game of number all time one is is Video Magica. Cool. So this has managed to hold your number one spot since our review. Yes, which was a while. Because at the time you said it was your number one, and the fact that it's held your number one until, until now is, I think, pretty impressive, all things considered. Considering mm -hmm. how, yeah. So, yes, how do you play Video Magica? Short overview. Mm -hmm. Basically, you it's sort of it's sort of like bingo-ish. You have mm. a board. With a bunch of different elements, and then you draw them out, draw random elements out of a bag, and then you have seven crystals that you place on them if you have that element. You only place them on one, sadly. Mm -hmm. But when you complete a portal, then you get the po points or or a bit or ability or 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 and the end game or special end game points mm -hmm. that uh, that it gives you, and then you take a new portal. Like one of the ability point, immediate ability, and there's four types: just points, end game, end game points, abilities for the rest of the game, and immediate abilities. Do you know what I'm looking up here? I just realized that the designer of Via Magica is Paul Amari, who's the same designer as Blitzkrieg, which is one of Emo's favorite games. Uh, yeah. Uh, Who that? Okay, that makes no sense at all. How they can, how they can make it a terrifying war game and they're all fairy tale. Blitzkrieg's not that terrifying. The art's terrifying, but it's all abstracted. But anyways, uh -huh. you're saying via magic. Sorry for the distraction. Mm -hmm. the, and via ma and then when you complete a portal, there are four types. Mm -hmm. And oh, it's actually made of saying the four types. Yep. You heard them. And then you get to have that. An example of an immediate ability is that is one portal. As soon as you complete it, you can you have you get to take two portals instead of just one. Mm -hmm. So you have four portals for the rest of the game. Yeah. And and there are a bunch of things you can get. Like when you have a certain amount of portals completed, then you can take one, but you only get one chance. Yeah, you get these awards for you know you've completed and three also portals, have four completing portals. Completing a certain amount of the same color portal or getting mm -hmm. one of each. Yeah. Why do you like the game? Well, one, I like the theme. Two, I like the gameplay. Yeah. Three, I like the art. Yeah, the art is absolutely gorgeous in this game. I know, and adorable. And four? Five. Oh, this, this is number this, No, I just did number you, you four. You three. Oh, number, number four is the simpleness. Mm -hmm. And number five, it's, a, it's easy to carry around. It's not a giant box. It's a small little box. Yeah. And the only reason it looks bigger than my head is because it's on camera. Yeah. Actually, it's close to the size of my head. <laughs> it's very close. Yep. The only reason it looks much bigger than me is because it's on camera and close. So close those up. are your top 10 games. Uh, starting with Creature Comforts, which would be your 11, Valeria Card Kingdoms, Dixit, Castle of Caldell, Grimmaster Raid, Truffle Shuffle, Mia London. Oh, wait, we skipped all these. It's okay. Eh. We're going to skip these. You know where they are. Trogdor, Mountain Goats, GPS, yes, Harry Potter, Harvest Battle, and, and Via Magica. And that is it.
Mm-hmm. Your top 10 games of all time as of 2021. Yes. And I have a question for you, Ricky. Let's yes. just figure out for, for next time. I'm, when I'm we do good. this list in 2022, how many of these do you think are still going to be in your top 10? At least three. Three of them. Cool. At least. Let's find out. Let's find out. Until next time, I am Alex. And I am Ricky. And have a good one.